You can't train for this. No doubt. I ain't afraid of work. I ain't afraid of play. I ain't afraid to get the job done and do it my own damn way. I ain't afraid of life. Times like this. Good morning, everybody. Welcome back to the Stony Ridge Farm Channel. We are at the Fall Fence Farm here in Worthington, Indiana, and they're doing the coin toss for the fencing competition. This is a single man fencing competition. They're going to build fence off over the hill right down through here. I'll show you real quick. Lots of cool specs. We're going to give you all the specs here in just a little bit. Again, we're at Farm Fence Solutions here in Worthington, Indiana. We're going to build off over the hill. This is an all manual fencing build. In other words, the only power equipment they're gonna be able to use is an auger. I'll show you real quick. So we've got augers, drill bits, routers, chainsaws, a few other things, but no big post drivers, guys. So this is going to be a challenge. The single man fencing competition here in 2023 in Worthington, Indiana. Let's get busy. Woo! No drop starting cancel. Yeah, wearing your glasses. So guys, they're going through kind of a driver's meeting. If you've ever done any racing or anything like that, this is the driver's meeting for all this that's going on. They're doing a safety briefing. They're talking about equipment that they're using and they're talking about the plans. We're gonna give you guys a full spec on all this. Thanks so much for watching the Stony Ridge Farm Channel today. This is gonna be a good time. Be sure you stay tuned for part two where they'll be building in teams right down here and that's tomorrow. All right, guys, here's the part where we reach out to a sponsor of this event. This is Roy with Wood Defender. I'm gonna get some Wood Defender on my hand now. <laughs> Roy, tell us about Wood Defender and what you got going here, bud. All right, what we have here, this is the one that we did yesterday. Yep. And uh, we actually use the uh, backpack sprayer. Okay. And what we're gonna do today is we're gonna apply a little pressure. We're gonna use one of our Wood Defender commercial grade machines. Gotcha. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna turn my tip down. By doing that, I'm gonna be able to spray the top of the fence, which is very important to, to, to protect it because the last thing you wanna do is have a fence that doesn't have the top stain okay. protected. So I'm gonna turn my tip down. As you can see, I'm just spraying the top. And what I'm gonna do is I'm using the nails as a stopping place when I stain the body of the fence. I'm gotcha. gonna spray down. Now, if I was a homeowner, I'm freaking out about all this running down the front of the fence. Well, Tell me, me about that. Well, with Wood Defender Josh, that's our least concern. We want saturation. Saturation means it's gonna run a little. As long as it runs, that, that means that it's all gonna self-level. And there's actually no wrong way to apply it. You can brush it, you can roll it, you can spray it. With a good commercial grade piece of equipment, our contractors are able to do a 200 foot privacy fence in under an hour. Nice, nice. But we, we talk about all these runs, there's no way you can mess it up. You, I can come back and I can do this right here all yeah. day long. It's all gonna self level. It's okay. all gonna look and the same. And it'll look just like that when it look just like that when that settles dries. Out. Awesome, and what color is this? This is our Wood Defender Leatherwood, but okay. let's step around the back and look at the penetration. You can see instantly. Yep, it's penetrating through the knots. What we're doing and coming is coming around the backside. Also, we're, we're sealing and protecting this fence, so you can see where it came through the knots, yep. and it'll come up the bottom and come around the top. Nice, cool. 
let's go over here and show me some that was done uh, just yesterday. So this was done yesterday and water is beading up on it. All you right. can see the sun has dried, has dried the water off of this side, but we nice. sprayed this and literally 15 minutes afterward, it started raining. It rained all the way till dark yesterday. This and you can see this post here. We did yep. that as well. This one right here is from last year. See how there's really no difference in color from, from fade or wear. Yeah. And you said this one was a year before. That done the year before. So guys, I have Wood Defender on my fence at home. Roy actually came out, showed me how to use it, showed me what to do. And you guys have a whole contractor set up too. So you can get on wooddefender.com and check out their contractor setup mm -hmm. where you can get signed up. And they build this custom trailer right here. So if a guy wants to make a living, we can show you how to do it. One other thing is we offer, Josh, is we offer a Wood Defender training class. Okay, cool. Once a month, we have people coming from all over the country. Our class coming up this month, we actually have a fence company coming from uh, Alaska. Nice. And normally we have 25 to 50 people there. And uh, that one day school, we can teach any company how to either start a business, standing fences and decks and protecting outdoor structures. Or we can, if you have an existing outdoor business, we can teach you how to add this to it. To, to really make your company more profitable. Cool, Wood Defender guys, check it out. I'll post a link down there in the video description to Wood Defender and to uh, some product there. The same color product that we use on my fence and the same color product that we use on this fence uh, from Amazon. You guys sell right on Amazon. Absolutely. Awesome, cool, thanks. Thank you. Take care, Roy, appreciate it. Let's get busy watching fence build. So first of all, thanks for judging the competition this year. Thanks for coming all the way from New Zealand. Secondly, you have a, a, a charity? A, a uh, a mean, probably a mental health campaign. Okay. I do okay. have a charity that overarches it, but okay. it's a mental health campaign about taking five minutes out of your day to lean on a gate and talk to a mate and check in on somebody that you might be a little bit worried about or even just check in on yourself. But dial up somebody that you haven't heard from for a while and just see how they're trucking. Yeah, lean on a gate, talk to a mate. Real good thing for fencing and rural, uh, rural America, rural New Zealand, rural Australia, rural anywhere, is to just take five minutes out of the day, lean on a gate, talk yep. to a mate. A lot of country folks don't have anybody to talk to, so it takes two seconds to make a phone call. Yep. Or lean on a gate, talk to a mate. Check awesome. In, check in on somebody. You might find that they need help, or even maybe if they check in on you, you might be able to um, get some help from them as well. Yep. But just get back to actually talking on your phone and uh, using it for what it's designed for, as, as well as everything else we use it for. Depression is real, even in the farm world, especially in the farm world. Oh, 100%. Yep. Awesome. Hey, thanks very much. Yeah. Taking up rodeo again next week. Is he taking up rodeo again next week after this? Might be. You hit water yet, bud? Now getting close. <laughs> getting close. Hang on, right. This is a good way to hand dig a well right this here. Is, uh, this is rough going. Yeah. I can see it. Whose idea was this anyway? <laughs> What time does the chiropractor get here? Hopefully soon. All right, guys. So we are exactly one hour into this fence building competition, and we are still on the first hole. What you don't know is this was a strip mined area right here, and they brought topsoil back in. But just under the soil is rock after rock after rock. And I think there is a bit of regret going on right now because these guys are working their butts off, as you can see. That's Mr. Gibson Farm Fence Solutions, Ryan Gray, Cowboy Fence, Cowboy Construction, right, Ryan? That's right. And then we've got our North Carolina local boy here, Seben Jessup Jessup Ranch Fence.
All right, guys, so there's been a bit of a change of plans. We've been at this for four hours and literally gotten two posts in the ground. One post here and one post over here. The ground is so super hard out here. So we've had a drought and underneath the ground is a lot of rock and shale. So we've got these posts in the ground, those posts in the ground, and then went on and started using the Protec Evo to drill the rest of the holes. So each one of these guys right now are going through and marking their holes and they're gonna get a full timeout. So this is a six hour competition. They're gonna get a timeout while they're drilling the holes because we simply will not get done before midnight or probably tomorrow morning. It's taken two hours to dig one hole. So we're gonna dig them with the machines and then we'll set them. They're on 700 on the mark, because that was the first hole I drilled. So they're margin measured at 700. I can drill them a bit deeper. Yeah, no, it's not. I mean, I've dug. But that was including the cutters. That wasn't. Yeah, I've dug 100 out. That was including the cutters with the 700. It's not deep so enough. If you want me to do them others, I'll do them. <laughs> I would probably need to check another one. See. If all right, guys, here we are with the best dress bunch in the whole crowd. You guys got some snazzy sunglasses there. Uh, Thank you, Josh. Freebies down here, American <laughs> Timber and Steel. Uh, tell us about American Timber and Steel. You guys are out of uh, Norwalk, Ohio, is that correct? That is the home office, okay. and Nacogdoches, Texas is our main facility. Nice. We'll get you guys some footage right there. Uh, we visited Nacogdoches, Texas out there, and that was a pretty awesome trip, uh, seeing Absolutely. all that southern yellow pine stacked up out there. Good food down there in Texas, too. Can't say much for the Ohio food. Uh, <laughs> it serves us well. <laughs> yeah, there you go. So tell them who you are real quick. These guys are major sponsors of the uh, fencing forum this year. I'm Paul Cannon. I handle the East Coast and North uh, for ag fencing. Okay. And Bill Kaminsky in a nutshell, the Midwest, the Mid-South. Gotcha. Awesome. Yes, sir. Cool. Yep, cool. we've been a sponsor here of this event since uh, it started five years ago. So if a guy wants American Timber and Steel post, what does he got to do? We have a great website at amtim.com uh, that you can go on and uh, get in touch with us, pick up the phone, email. Okay. Gotcha. Uh, we also have an interactive website that you know you can submit uh, if you have an interest in a product, whether it's post or one of the other myriad of products that we make and sell. Okay, we're looking at 30 years is our expectation. Okay. And uh, if you go to 6.0, it would just like a sawmill pine tree utility pole, we'd be looking for 40 years of service. 40 years, yes. gosh. So you won't have to build it again until you're 86 in my <laughs> case, right? <laughs> and we won't be doing cows in. Guys, thanks a lot. I won't be here. <laughs> American you, Timber and Steel. Yeah, you guys will be retired by then. <laughs>
make sure you don't get off those corners. Poplar, that's never gonna rot, is it? All right guys, so the competition was supposed to last about six hours. We are on hour number eight right now. And looks like Luke with Farm Fence Solutions is the first guy to get all of his wire up and strained and he's starting to tighten things down just a little bit. It's looking absolutely gorgeous, guys. Ryan Gray's still got a few more posts to put in with Cowboy Construction and a few more posts to put in here for Jessup Ranch Fence. Sebron, have you been this tired in a while, bud? Yeah, a month ago. Yeah? <laughs> <laughs> On my place. <laughs> this is a fencing competition. So the competition not only is about speed, but the competition's also about meeting the spec of the wire. And we'll talk to you guys more about the spec of the wire once everybody gets finished up. So we'll see you guys first thing in the morning. We'll come out here with a judge and we'll show you the spec and we'll show you who won. All right, guys. So, competition's over. We have the head judge, Hugh, from Strain Right Fencing That's Systems out of New Zealand, right? That's the one. So we got into a bit of hard ground here, right? 
a lot harder than the ground where you guys do the competition for golden pliers. Is that right? Heaps harder. <laughs> yeah. yeah. This, so, like, Luke yeah. there was an hour, 20 minutes digging these first digging holes. One hole, it's just yeah. that hard. Yep. So in order to accomplish this before midnight tomorrow, we ended up having to pre-drill the holes for these guys so that they could get them in the ground uh, because it just was nearly impossible to, to dig yeah. them by hand. So, well, show me a little bit of the spec. I'm just going to let you walk through. This is the winner. This is Luke Gibson from uh, Farm Fence Solutions. Fence turned out absolutely gorgeous, but there are a few things that you wanted to point out that weren't quite perfect. And uh, let's just teach some folks about how these are judged. So this tool here is made to judge the height, which he, he did well on the height. Yep. And it's also got the wire gauging on the back here. Yep, so, so there's a notch so cut, if you guys notches. can't see. They need to line up right with the wire. So that one's lined up perfect. This one's lined up perfect. That one's a little, a little low. Bit out. Yeah, a little out. Yep. And then down here, just a little bit out down there as we get down. And this is all judged on a point system, is that correct? Yep, we measure the millimeters that it is out. Yep. And then you total those millimeters and divide it by five, and each each, each five is a, is a full point. Okay, yep. gotcha. So how many points? So Luke completed his job, and the other guys didn't quite complete their jobs. And you can go over there and look. So we have uh, Seabrin Jessup's fence, which is right here and that's Jessup Ranch Fence. And then we have in gray with Cowboy Construction, right? That's the one. So tell me what made Ryan's fence not quite as good as what you were looking for uh, in Seabrin's fence. Uh, is there something the, that we can see from here? Something that stands out quite a bit. The posts should be perpendicular to the ground down here or equal gotcha. distance each side of it. And he's got some of them are nearly vertical. Okay, All right down there. in there, yep, nearly so vertical. Down in there. Some of the stapling which is on the other side there, staples should all be put in on the same angle and down the center of the post. Okay. Where it's not too bad on that one. Yeah. But if we go down the line here. Okay. There's... Okay, yeah, I just see this varied, Yep. Like yep. one like this, there's, there's quite a bit of movement in all these staples. Yep. You don't want to have that much wire movement in them all. Okay. And gotcha. so there's quite a difference between this and that one over there. So we're not just judged on how fast they can build a fence. They're judged on the quality of the fence and meeting the spec that you guys have, right? Yep. So what are we looking at right here? We've got a, a stay and a stay block. Okay. With compression bar. And that's, it would normally be in a minimum of 150 down in here, but the ground was just so hard and rocky over there that that's why they're up. Gotcha. As high as they are. So this is mortise and tenon joinery right is, here. Yep. And this is called, uh, is this called a Rance Brace? R-A-N-C-E, is that what you call it over in New Zealand? No, nah, we call it a stay. A stay, okay, yep. gotcha. Cool. And so there's a few terminology things that are a bit different. Yeah, yeah, definitely. But just, if we go back here, here's a prime example of the, the stapling like that. Okay, yeah, yeah, you can see they're, they're just not even. So there's one there, they're all, different directions right there. And that, that comes with the pressure of the fencing. If there was time points, so the first one off gets zero, and then the others after that, um, for every two minutes, it's a full point that they lose. So they're rocking and rolling, and they're losing points yeah. as they go. So And they're pretty fatigued when they get to this stage. They're just yeah. not quite thinking. So on the job, probably not do it like that, but right. competition pressure. Yep, absolutely. Yep. Well, thanks, Hugh. Appreciate right. it, guys. No now worries. you know who won. Yeah, thanks, Hugh. You guys know who won the competition now. It was Luke Gibson from Farm Fence Solutions. Second place was Seabrin Jessup from Jessup Ranch Fence. And third place was Ryan Gray from Cowboy Construction out of Washington. So North Carolina, Indiana, and Washington. Guys, thanks so much for joining us. This is a stock fence that they would typically build over in New Zealand, and we're trying some new stuff. This is a worldwide kind of competition, guys, and we also have some folks from England out here building on day two. So we'll see you in tomorrow's video, part two, day two of the fencing competition here in Worthington, Indiana at the Fall Fence Forum. Thanks, guys. See you next time. Woo! Hey, we got to do this. Woo! Yeah, <laughs> even got it in New Zealand now, baby. Yeah. We'll come on down to the Stony Ridge. Bring your wife, bring your kids. We're living life pure and sweet. That's the way it's supposed to be, Stony Ridge. Hit it. Contact. <laughs>
in your blooper. <laughs> what I'm gonna do, Josh? Bring up the Seabrit, let me show you how to use that boy. <laughs> <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, purple Johnny Cash. <laughs> like Is that purple? Did my hair did I put the hat on. Oh, you did your hair? Let's yeah. see what we got here. Put the hat on. Uh, oh, you had to do the hair to get the hat on? I did my hair too. <laughs> actually just coming, but, uh, oh yeah, yeah, that's it. Looks great. So guys, you wouldn't believe it, but <laughs> Mr. Plus Jessup cool. here was a professional synchronized swimmer just prior to becoming a fence builder. <laughs> <laughs> Brian Gray, Cowboy Construction, working on his next spinal fusion surgery. <laughs> kind of drilling like this makes me want Chinese food. I kind of want some, I'd take some, some spring rolls and spicy chicken. Yeah. Some General Tso's chicken. Okay. And Paul, what do you do with American Timber and Steel? Try and sell some wood posts okay. once in a while. <laughs> and? Bill Kaminsky, sales and technical assistance okay how's that for an answer and you got, can you tell we know these guys pretty good <laughs> here these are the guys from american timber and steel they just got here this morning <laughs> not new zealand man that's the wrong way <laughs> make a good video on the other side of the world <laughs> yeah. Go and ask yeah. face, the, the toilets turn a different way in new zealand and so do the auger bits <laughs> This is going to seem backwards, just so you know. Guys, don't pay attention to the camera guy talking to himself. 